Hi, so this is the catch-up uh, lecture that you have to work through on your own um, because of the fact that class attendance on Thursday 16 May was absolutely atrocious. Thank you for the guys that were there and um, the idea it now is that the work that was supposed to be covered in class today, I will cover through three or four videos. I'm going to try to keep them short and um, you need to work through those videos and content on your own. And then next week sometime, I will send out an announcement um, well in advance. I will be posting an online quiz to check your understanding and make sure that you guys know exactly what is expected in terms of exemptions. So just to recap, if we talk about exemptions, it's really important that you look at the framework and keep the following principle in mind. You cannot exempt an amount before it hasn't been included in gross income. And if you ever forget, don't forget the home exemption or exemption, wherefore art thou exemption, neither actually incurred nor of a capital nature, exemptions nestled between gross income and income. So we ended off on Tuesday by looking at the exemptions that are available usually for employees and the one that we need to finish off with um, in terms of employer-employee relationships is the one relating to scholarships and bursaries. Now ladies and gentlemen the general rule is if you receive a bona fide scholarship or bursary from an institution um, then if it's based on merit, in other words, you receive it because your metric marks were high enough or you receive it because your varsity marks are high enough, whatever the case may be, if it's based on merit, it is automatically exempt. The issue comes in in terms of bursaries that are awarded to employees or relatives of employees. So if an employer firstly gives a bursary to an employee, right, it will usually be exempt, but it's very important the employee has to agree to reimburse the employer if that employee fails to complete his studies for reasons other than death, ill health or injury. So if your employer awards you with a bursary by virtue of your employment to study SEMA, for example, and you don't finish the course because you fail or whatever the case may be, then it won't be exempt unless you've agreed to reimburse your employer in writing. Um, you know, for that expense. Um, the exceptions to this, of course, is if you fail to complete um, because of d death, ill health or injury, because over those we don't have any um, control. The issue usually lies more in terms of relatives of, of employees. Um, and it's interesting, this exemption changed. Um, they have an addition added to it to make provision for differences in exemption amounts between abled and disabled um, persons. So if you have a employee and the employer gives a bursary or a scholarship to the employee's relative, for example, a child, if that um, relative is not disabled, if the scholarship or bursary is for studying um, from grade R through to grade 12, in other words, primary and secondary school, or NQF level one to four, now that is usually your technical colleges, etc., etc. then the annual exemption is 20,000 Rand. Um, that exemption goes up to 60,000 Rand for NQF level five to 10. So if you, you, for example, are the child of somebody and your parent's employer gives you a bursary to study at varsity, EBAL 2708, for example, is on an NQF level 7. So because you are within higher education, usually university, you know, those types of institutions, NQF level 5 to 10, your um, exemption amount goes up to 60,000 Rand. Now, there is an issue in terms of what the employee's remuneration proxies, proxies should be. So remuneration proxy simply refers to the total remuneration for an employee during a year, but there's a specific calculation attached to it. So in EBAL 2708, the remuneration proxy will be given to students. This simply says that if the remuneration proxy of the employee exceeds 600,000 Rand for the year, then there's no exemption. And this has to make sense to you in terms of 
you know, if your parents are in a position where their remuneration exceeds 600,000 rand a year or the remuneration proxy, then the assumption on SARS's side is that they can actually pay you for your studies or take out a loan to pay for your studies. Um, so it's only if the remuneration proxy is less than 600,000 rand that you can qualify for either the 20,000 exemption or the 60,000 exemption. Um, the addition to the act or the legislation now says if the relative of the employee is disabled and make sure you have a look at what is meant with disabled, we have a definition for that in section 6b of the act. Um, instead of 20,000 rand for grade R to 12 and NQF level 1 to 4, the exemption is 30,000 rand. And instead of 60,000 rand for NQF level 5 to 10, the exemption is 90,000 rand. Again, if the employee's remuneration proxy exceeds 600,000 rand, there's no exemption, even if the relative of the employee is disabled. Um, just a note on the remuneration proxy. While the amount will be given to students, please keep in mind that if the employee was not employed for the full year, you will have to apportion that remuneration proxy. And what I mean with that is, if the, the 600,000 rand refer, refers to a full year, so let's say from 1 March to 28 Feb. Now, if they were not employed for that full year, let's say they were only employed for six months, then the remuneration proxy that you'll use for this specific exemption will be 300,000 rand because you'll go 600,000 multiplied by six over 12, the period that they were actually employed. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the first video that you have to work through on your own, um, scholarships and bursaries. The next one will look at investment income, specifically in relation to interest.